Popeye's coming up on us now. It seems that the cigarette halter, bounty hunter, has moved slightly ahead of Popeye at this point along the line. However, Bob, bounty hunter has a little more power than Popeye and also is two feet longer. Popeye's one of the local boats here. He should be very familiar with the course. Shouldn't have any problems today. We didn't see Popeye out in California with us on the race out there, but we believe he's going to be doing pretty well in the racing circuit this year. This is Popeye's second race this year. Driven by owner driver Al Copeland from Louisiana down here. Popeye's still holding together pretty good. Popeye's coming up towards the last two legs of the race. They've gone ahead of incentive. And it seems that it's a three-way race between the three cigarettes for the monohole bo boats that are in the race. That's Long Shot, Bounty Hunter, and now Popeye. Popeye also gonna make a charge on runs of Puerto Rico. If Dave Freeze doesn't have the throttles down now. He better put him down or Popeye's gonna go right past him. From what we've seen so far with Popeye, he seems to have a little bit of trouble getting the boat trimmed right. Or unless he's right on the edge, he's reaching maybe maximum hull speed. Okay, Popeye. Popeye now is gonna pull Rums of Puerto Rico. Okay, on the outside, Favor Shoes is gonna pull them both. Both Rums of Puerto Rico and Popeyes. Favor Shoes. Favor Shoes is working his way through the field. Davis Shoes has already passed Popeye. He's making a final charge on runs of Puerto Rico. That'll be two more down and about five more to go to first place. Go get him, Michelle. Okay, Popeye looks like he's getting on it. On it right now. He is gonna let um, Faber get any far ahead. Popeye's pulling him like he's got no problem. If Dave Greaves doesn't get on the throttle here, Popeye is gonna go right by him like he's got no problem. All right, we got a good drag race going on here. Looks like Dave's on the throttles again. Davis Shoes at the race start was in last place, but look at him now. He is humming. We got a good battle between Rums of Puerto Rico and Popeyes. One of them's gonna break. One of them is. Yeah. 
It looks like it's neck and neck. Popeyes trimmed way down in to make it a smooth ride going down here. You can see him coming in way up towards the front of the boat. Uh, Now, you didn't say it, but all of a sudden, Popeye made a sharp turn to the left. He was inside the spectator fleet. Can't do that. Had to go through the spectator fleet and on the outside to make the checkpoint going south. Now, Popeye lost a little more time going down here, and he is going to have to move to catch up. It's a little rough going south. Got the wind into us, and he's just moving along. He's not nailing it too much to the floor. You're just racing along here, going up the beach. Very nicely. Popeye's still way in. I think that he likes to run his boat in. We've seen it more and more in the water than out. Oh, it was just charging all. Let's see what Popeye, get your tail in gear and catch up with everybody. Okay, we're all ahead right now, and coming back up the other way is going to be number one offshore fleet. He's got about 10 miles on Popeye right now. Get him dead out of that water. Let's see him go. Popeye's a 37 and a half foot cigarette powered by twin 625 Merc Cruiser. And he can move it if he wants. fried chicken. Bill, why do you do it? Well, you know, it's just a matter of, um, of fun and games, I guess. Uh, it's just a, a matter of the sport, uh, the uh, element of the sea, and uh, and uh, a lot of money. <laughs> uh, how long have you been in racing? That's what I said. Um, well, I've been racing for about, about 20 years. I, I started with Mercury in 1959, and uh, um, I've raced all over the all over the world, really, and and uh, I took a little breather for about five years, and I just got back into it again this year. Well, now you're a full-time uh, crew, and you tell me this is your vocation, uh, working on Popeyes here. Do a lot of people have full-time uh, crews and throttle men, etc.? I think most the, most of the of the real hot open boats do. Yes, they have uh, they have a complete uh, engineering staff and and. Uh, and uh, a complete crew as far as mechanics and and uh, and uh, support vehicles and and, uh, and equipment. Uh, um, it's becoming a very much of a professional sport. Why do people put so much money into this type of a sport? Well, I think now it's becoming more so uh, more of an, a, a, a public relations uh, uh, image. Uh, they're starting to get more. More uh, of the big companies, uh, Fava Shoes, Popeye's Fried Chicken, uh, Mercury Marine. They're, uh, uh, needless to say, they're they're getting a lot of promotional out of it. How much? What does it cost to put a boat on the circuit for a year? Um, if the IRS isn't listening, uh, you're probably looking at about. Uh, uh, you're probably looking at the boat alone turnkey for about a hundred and a half. That's 150,000. 
Okay. Does it take more once you once you get it onto the circuit just to keep it running and get it running properly? Or yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much turnkey. That's not counting any uh, any um, maintenance after the boat is ready to race. It's not counting uh, your uh, uh, traveling expenses and vehicle expenses, and and um, it's not counting your tractor and trailer rig. Uh, um, it's that's that's just the boat turnkey for the first race. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck out there on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Any, you're needed. <laughs> anything great that you're looking for? Well, we're looking for a heavy sea. Yeah, we we uh, we would like to have some some rough water, and uh, we've had enough calm water races this year for the cats, and now we'd like to go for now look, we'd like to go offshore racing now. Well, hopefully we'll have it for you up here in Point Pleasant. Good luck. I hope so too. Thank you. Team Mercury. Popeye, Al Copeland, and Billy Saroy, the current leaders in this race right now, running well out ahead of everybody. They're really putting it to them today. Three beautiful Mercury's on the back of that catamaran style hall. It's gorgeous. They're really running hard. He might sell chicken for a living, but he's not chicken. You can tell that. He's really sticking it to it today. They're just letting it all out. They're running away with the race right now. Al Copeland from New Orleans and Billy Saroy. What a team they got there. Beautiful setup. Right on that third step on that boat. Just everything's just going perfect for him today. They're looking around, see if anybody's close. Saroy, Al Copeland, the old Billy Martin 39 cigarette used to be the bounty hunter. Then it was a fave of shoes. And now these two guys out of New Orleans are running it. Beautiful boat. Rick that boat in about six weeks for Billy Martin one time. Co-sponsor, Halter Marine. Beautiful boat. Nice running boat. They're currently running in about third slot. Chicken, Halter Marine, 
the winners of the Harmsworth Trophy 1982. They won the first leg in the Stroh's Grand National in Detroit. And then they went to Cow's Torquay in England. And they won the second leg. So they win the coveted Harmsworth Trophy. And there's the Popeye famous chicken man. Al Copeland, Bill Saroy, doing a job out here. Currently running in sixth slot. They're kind of water today, I'll tell you. That's a good heavy boat. They seem to know what they're doing. Oh, they got a hatch coming up on them. The hatch pin's gone. They must have been doing some banging somewhere today. What a beautiful boat. All repainted the side of the boat in the striping in Saugatuck, Michigan. Making their turn, heading down the beach again, southbound. Popeye, Al Copeland, Bill Saroy. All right, Al, he made his turn, heading southbound now, right on course. They're putting the hammer down now. They're running 93 miles an hour. Uh, look at them go. Engines sound good, boat looks good. Handling the water right. They got a little bit of tab in the water. Bill Saroy, Popeye Racing Team. Uh, all I can say is, wow. Uh, this is the first race for their new dreadnought. I'm going to let Bill describe to you what it is. Well, yeah, it's a 50-foot uh, aluminum cougar cat. And uh, needless to say, every race is always looking for a little edge. And, and uh, um, of course, with this 50, anything over 45-foot un uh, uh, unlimited cubic inch uh, uh, deal, we uh, decided to, to put this boat together. It's got a uh, four, 500 cubic inch, 700 horsepower uh, Merc Cruisers and Merc Cruiser surfacing drives on it. And uh, uh, I think it gives it a little edge, at least until Howard gets his boat done. How much time do you have in it now? Running wise, we've got, uh, we've only got about an hour in the boat, really. What do you think so far? Well, so far I'm quite impressed. Everything has worked out uh, absolutely perfect right out of the box. Uh, the only problem we've had, and I'd love to have that problem every time, is we simply didn't have enough wheel to uh, to make it run as fast as I think the potentially uh, as it potentially can run. Okay, big question. Uh, everybody's asking, how many throttle handles do you have in there? There's four throttle handles, but there are two of them hooked together. So actually, I can throttle the whole left side or, or, or throttle the whole right side, and uh, that way also, if we if we do pop a motor, uh, we can still. Uh, throttle comfortably, I, I hope anyway. What kind of water do you look for with this boat? Probably the first time I've ever gone to a race where I really don't care what kind of water we have. Uh, uh, the boat is, I, I feel, quite competitive in calm water, and uh, I think we have uh, the length advantage uh, in, in the rough water to, to bridge the rough stuff. So well, we feel pretty confident right now. Of course, that's always the time when you have problems, but uh, um, everything has worked out quite nicely, and, and uh, with a little bit of luck, uh, we have twice as many things to go wrong as everybody else, I think, but, and I guess that certainly cuts down the odds, but uh, we feel pretty good. And Billy Saroy, uh, many-time world champion in, in many different race boats. I guess this is the biggest thing he's ever driven, and uh, it looks like a winner already. We're going to see some acceleration in this one. There's your start. We've got a start, a clean start, right in the chute. The 1983 Coral Gables Challenge Cup, and look at the Popeyes go. Number 19, Al Cope and Bill Saroy, four men aboard, full fuel load, and away she goes. Just walking the fleet. 
Harnison's at Folks Rim trying to hang on to him. Right behind us, the collection. But the story right now is the Popeye's Pepsi Challenger. We're doing 110 miles an hour right now, and those guys look like they're out for a Sunday afternoon joyride. The word is awesome. We counted the first roller, went right through it. All right, what have we got? We've got four 625 horsepower Merc Cruisers. We've got four number three extended Speedmasters with the shorty drive. We've got 50 foot of aluminum Cougar Cat. We've got sit down, comfort, cockpit, and we've got 150 miles an hour right now. The, the Raging Cajun, Al Copeland. Look at this machine. It's a dreadnought. It's not a race boat, it's a dreadnought. Listen to those engines. It's a race all by itself. Look at the ride they're getting. They're sitting there as comfortable as if they were sitting around in a Popeye's restaurant enjoying some of that good chicken and biscuits. The trim is perfect. If you look, the front step is just barely kissing off the water. The second step is planing slightly. The whole boat is airborne. I'm sure that's just the way they had it on the drawing board. Giving us a thumbs up. You guys are getting the ride of your life. What a machine. to you, Al Copeland, Billy Saroy, and crew. The shape of things to come. All right, number three in the chicken industry and growing Popeye's Pepsi Challenger. Number three in the chicken industry, I said, but number one in offshore racing. The number 19 of Alvin Copeland and Billy Saroy, the 50-foot incredible four-engine Popeye's Pepsi Challenger. Right now, she's got a three-quarter mile lead on a second-place boat. You can see the fellas inside have the luxury of just glancing around to make sure that they maintain that lead. We've gone uh, an hour and 20 minutes now into the race, and this baby hasn't missed a beat. The behemoth is totally dominant. We spoke to Billy Saroy at great length uh, before the race about the boat. Let's just uh, pan over and ch chat with Billy for a moment. Do you think this is the end, or are we going to continue upgrading and getting larger and stronger in the future? Well, I can't help but to believe that uh, it's, it's got to be a whole new door opening for the future. Uh, uh, without evolution, without new things and, and uh, engineering feats, where would we been if we'd have stayed with uh, flat bottom boats uh, 15 years ago? Uh, same with exhaust systems, engines, uh, fuel engine. There's just so many new uh, things coming along. And if we have, if we get a stay on mind on this uh, game, uh, it's just there's no need to, to race anymore, really. And I don't think it's the, I think it's the idea of the sport and of any kind of sport, racing boats or racing cars or motorcycles. You've got to have new technology, and uh, I just think this is another step forward. Uh, Bill, I've watched your career over, I guess, its entirety or, or, or most of it, and you've had your, your ups and, and your downs. You've been upside down at Parker, Arizona, and you've been uh, right side up in the, in the, winning, in the winner's circle in GN boats and OPC boats. Do you think we're getting uh, uh, safer, or do you think we're getting into a, a dangerous area now? Well, I don't think it's, it's uh, getting any more unsafe. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're running considerably faster than we've ever run before. But I think the boats, because just because of the magnitude of them, the size of them and so on, it can't help but to be somewhat safer. Um, we ran this boat 
yesterday for the first time in any kind of any kind of sea at all. And I, I, it wasn't the kind of sea that uh, uh, or any sea that was. I mean, we certainly have run a lot rougher, but uh, we were very concerned about would this boat perform in the rough water. And there were six, eight foot waves out there at times. And uh, boy, it was just magnificent. Now, what I'm saying is, is the boats can run at speed in those kind of waters uh, safely to where I feel very confident. I'm the biggest chicken in the world when it comes to going fast in a little boat. But um, this boat feels very, very safe at those speeds. Now, you know, knock on wood, hopefully nothing happens today or you know, it's probably calmer today than it was yet. But the point is, is safety in these bigger boats, I think we're much safer than we are in a V-bottom trying to run as fast as we're running in this boat in flat, calm water. Uh, Billy made some good points about the fact that as fast and awesome as this boat is, it is a very safe machine. Uh, just look at the people in that cockpit, and you can see that offshore racing has been brought into a, a new domain altogether. Uh, these guys are not getting hammered around nearly as much as the um, older, smaller boats are today in, uh, in, in what amounts to the same water. Starting to take the rollers head on. Interesting. These will be the larger seas in the race. We can watch the Popeyes as the water gets progressively higher and the swells get progressively longer. Uh, we just picked up a uh, full 10 miles an hour indicated airspeed. We're up to 90 right now. 95. And she's starting to launch. Let's watch this big boat as she carries through some of these big Pacific swells. I, I think it's interesting that uh, maybe it was a pun, but uh, earlier on, uh, Bill Soroy said that uh, he was chicken. Uh, he, was the, he was as big a chicken as anybody. I wonder if he meant fried chicken. They could be eating chicken in there today if they wanted to. As a matter of fact, they could be drinking champagne if they wanted to. What a beautiful ride. Perfect attitude, perfect angle of attack, spanning the waves just about as well as anything possibly could be designed to do. And uh, this boat is a real tribute to the setup people, the people that constructed it. The whole concept is a real winner. Make it look so easy when you realize that right now we're, we're clocking airspeed uh, just a tick under 100 miles an hour. Uh, this is even all the more awesome. Watch her launch. She's just, just kissing over, <coughs> just kissing over the top of the water. And the power stays right in the water at all times. Whoa, okay. We got her a full 12 inches out of the water that time. Al Copeland uh, had the foresight to put this boat on the water, and he got it out there first. Just recently in uh, the Wall Street Journal, they did a special on Al Copeland and his, his Popeye's empire. And it's hard to believe that 10 years ago, he was just starting with his uh, unusual uh, fried chicken recipe in uh, New Orleans. Come a long way. Number three selling uh, franchise or, or fast food fried chicken group in the country and growing. They got their eyes set on number two and maybe even the colonel, number one. Twenty-eight hundred horsepower, go get them. We're gonna call it a winner. Popeye's Pepsi Challenger, the winner of the RP Warmington Grand Prix. In the lead, second time out to Smith Shoal, showing him how it's done. The big cat. Bill Soroy said there is no rough water where this boat is concerned. We're getting into those big, big waves. Let's see how she takes them.
beautiful, beautiful ride. No sweat, no strain. Look at this boat carry. No problem whatsoever. 2,800 horsepower. Let's see, we're clocking 80 miles an hour. They're on their second big lap. They've got a couple of short ones to go, and then they'll be world champions, 1983. All right, as we make a, uh, a move towards Smith Shoal, I see to my left the US-1 of George Morales, the big B-bottom, is hanging right with us. It's down to the two superboats right now. No. Look at this boat handle through here. waging war here. Two dreadnoughts out in, the, out in the big water. They're competing at about 80 miles an hour in very, very rough water. Whoa! Both boats are launching. Both boats are aluminum cougars, one a V and one a cat. Like two heavyweights feeling each other out, slugging each other from round to round. The pop this boat uh, has taken drives and propellers into, into conditions and situations where they've never been before. It's an excellent test lab for the Mercruiser Development Program. I think they're all competitive. I think they're all equipment that we've never had before. Uh, the speeds that we've attained and, and picked up just in the last year and a half are just phenomenal. Um, I think it's probably better equipment than you've ever seen in the entire history of offshore. We were talking last night about how, how amazing it's been, the speed increases. How fast do you think uh, the sport's going to wind up going? Well, I think it's uh, obviously that's going to be controlled by the kind of water that we're running in and, and the kind of water that we ran in last year. And, and uh, except for today, it looks like it could be a little, a little nasty. I think if we're running in, in basically calm water, when you're looking at it on, on, a, on an annual basis, on an over-the-year basis, I think you're going to see much smaller, faster boats. And uh, that's what, in my opinion, dictates the game right now. You set uh, two kilometer records in the last few weeks, uh, I know, down in New Orleans. Uh, how's the boat running? Boat's running phenomenally well right now. Uh, we're tickled to death with everything. Uh, again, last year we had a chance to work out of a lot of our bugs. I'm looking for a piece of wood to knock on. but. Uh, um, we feel good, we feel confident, and uh, all we need is a little bit of luck. I was sitting here with Bill Soroy, throttle man and crew chief of the Popeyes racing team, and a real veteran racer, 24 hours before the race, 1,200 and some odd miles from here to New York. Biggest, I guess, longest race of your career, is that right? Yeah, uh, I don't think uh, any of us know what we're really in for. Bill, do you have any fear? Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think the nature of the beast is is to have fear of anything that you don't know of, and I think that we're in for something that we just we just don't know. Um, we've attempted to to uh, cover every aspect of this thing as best we can, and 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 from the experience of others that have have attempted to do so. But uh, I'm I'm absolutely sure that there's all kinds of things that we just just uh, cannot comprehend until we've been there one time. Okay. Uh, you've been preparing for this for at least six to nine months, I think. Is that right? Yeah, we've been working on this boat here solid for four months 
seven days a week from seven in the morning to nine o'clock every night. And uh, of course, prior to that, uh, there was a lot of preliminary stuff that uh, was done for a month or so even before that. Have you done any physical training to get yourself in shape uh, body-wise? Well, I started out attempting to work out regularly, but uh, because of the rigid schedule, just attempting to get the equipment together, we've kind of laxed off in the last, last couple, last month. And uh, not that I like to admit it, but um, I, I wish I were in better shape, yeah. I think uh, anybody that says they're ready for this uh, physically is, is uh, sticking their neck out pretty far. Uh, you have some trade secrets here. We won't do any, any prying, but generally, what uh, differences have, have you done in rigging this boat than in a normal race boat? Well, obviously, I, uh, a regular race boat, the, the idea is to make it go as fast as you can possibly make it with, in a given condition. Um, this particular boat, we've almost gone the opposite of that. We've, we, we're not totally concerned with top-end boat speed. Uh, our primary concern is, is longevity and attempting to, to, to make, make the old girl hold together. And uh, I think that's the name of this kind of, kind of racing, this enduro-type racing, is just, just hanging in there. Yeah. What uh, power plants have you chosen? Are they, are they detuned race units, or are they uh, more uh, conventional units? No, these are the, these are the new uh, Merc Cruisers, new 540 cubic inch, 575 uh, horsepower Merc Cruisers on the, on, the, on the number four Merc Cruiser surfacing stern drive. And uh, they're, they're very low compression motors. They're only 8.8 .8 to 1 compression. Um, very mild camshaft, carbureted motors. We're not running fuel injection. We're not running anything exotic. We're running pretty, pretty much stock uh, equipment that, again, we just hope will last and, and give us the fuel economy that we're going to need to make this run. What creature comforts are built into the boat? Well. Um, Unlike a regular race boat, I mean, we have a top on the boat, and, and uh, we, we built the boat for four people. There's a lot of cushioning, so on that that uh, you normally wouldn't have in a race boat. There's a lot of uh, uh, just things to just things to to make a long distance run more comfortable. How about uh, food and drink and things like that? Yeah, we have uh, obviously we have a little cooler on board with with all of our. Uh, drinks that we're going to be drinking, which is basically going to be just, just basically water and, and a little bit of Gatorade and so on. We're going to probably try to stay away from the, the sugar sodas and so on. Um, just good, uh, wholesome stuff, like uh, we're going to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on board, the stuff that will give us good, good quick, uh, quick energy and, and, uh, and stay away from the junk. Cajun peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I wish we had some chicken, but it's kind of hard to cook on the, on the boat going that fast. Who will be the crew for this trip? Be myself, Al Copeland, um, Dick Clark, who's our navigator, and Bobby Idoni, who is going to back me up. So the throttle man will have relief? Yeah, th that's true, basically because Bobby is a throttle man, but, but uh, we also, uh, most everybody in the boat can do, do each other's uh, jobs as well. Will each guy get a rest period as, as you go up? Yeah, we've got a little hole in the back that, uh, that hopefully uh, uh, I guess you won't really know until you get into the race and find out how comfortable it is after a long period of time. But, but uh, we have a little hole in the back that's very well padded, and you just kind of squeeze down in there, sit sideways in it, and, and hopefully get a little rest. Okay, how long do you think it'll take you? Well, in theory, if if everything went perfect, which is highly improbable, you know that. If everything went uh, according to Hoyle, all of our fuel stops went, went uh, uh, exactly as planned, I think you're looking at about 18 hours, but we're planning on about 20, 21 hours. Okay. This is the first of the so-called great races, very different from anything else we've seen. Uh, do you intend to do something like this again? I'll let you know that uh, Wednesday morning. <laughs> uh, I don't know, we're kind of excited about it. Uh, uh, like I said earlier, uh, we have no idea what we're in for, I think. Um, the, uh, the thought has come up of possibly an around Hawaii deal. Tom Gentry is kind of talking a little bit about that. Uh, Steve Baum has attempted to put uh, the uh, Detroit-Chicago race together. These are the kind of events that we'd, we're tickled to death to, to be involved in and we want to be involved in. Uh, there were some problems this year. There would have been uh, two long-distance races this year, but. The dates just didn't seem to want to work out together, and, and uh, because of that, uh, uh, we only ended up with one. 
But uh, yeah, we'd like to see some more runs next year. So you feel this could be an actual event format where you have point-to-point -point races and a fleet of boats that, that do a circuit? Well, it obviously would start a whole new trend, uh, basically, uh, for these kind of boats, for the big boats anyway. Um, uh, again, in, in all seriousness, uh, uh, I think Wednesday will be uh, the, the point that, uh, or the time to answer that question. I think that this could be very, very demanding, and well, it's obviously going to be uh, very demanding, but uh, uh, we'll know more next week. Well, thank you, Bill. Uh, we, uh, uh, as always, wish you the best of luck, and I uh, hope this time you come back feeling well and uh, holding the trophy. Appreciate it. Thank you. And these guys have taken all the Atlantic and dish out from Miami to Atlantic City. And right now we're about 10 miles north of Atlantic City and they're still going. They are well under the record. It is now 4.15 in the afternoon. If they get to New York anytime before 7.30 p.m., they've got the record. And they're about two hours out right now. The question right now in everybody's mind is where is George Morales? The Merc Cruiser Special, when last heard from, was 109 miles off of the Verrazano Bridge. That was 30 minutes ago. He was off. Okay, it's 4.15 in the afternoon. And this is what it looks like when men have been racing for 19 solid hours in the North Atlantic. They don't look any of the worse for wear. They look rather comfortable in there. They, they picked the right boat for the job. Tremendously adept rough water boat. Everything seems to be A-OK -okay with the, uh, the equipment on board. The engines are all percolating the way they should. And with a 10 mile an hour uh, tailwind, we're reading uh, about 60 miles an hour. The question is, can they finish? And where is George Morales? There is no way to find out. It is very, very hazy. If Morales, as he was reported to be, is indeed 25 miles offshore, there's no way to see him. Uh, but we just saw his crew back at the airport in Atlantic City. And from their, uh, their description to us as to his location, uh, he would have a, probably a 20 or 30 mile lead right now. According to plan, they are not panicking. They are running exactly the speed that they wanted to run to set the record at the pace they want to set it. The key here is endurance. They've got to finish. On board, I see Jack Clark, Al Copeland, Bill Saroy, and Bob Idoni. And here's the leader of the race as we approach the end of the first leg, heading for Saugatuck. That's number one, the Popeye's Fried Chicken Diet Coke Special. In this boat is Al Copeland. <coughs> Al Copeland Jr., Stan Weir navigating, and Billy Sorias on throttles. Uh, this team just finished the race from Miami to New York, finishing second in a 46-foot V-bottom triple-engine Cougar. And they are certainly one of the outstanding teams in all of offshore power boat racing throughout the world. You can see if you look down on that boat, some unpainted aluminum. This is uh, work that was repaired after the race in New Jersey where they tore the side and upper deck combing sections up pretty badly. But it's a tribute to the crew that they've been able to get that boat back together and have it down here in tip-top shape. And they're in the lead in the spirit of America race here in Grand Haven, Michigan. This boat is powered by four Merc Cruiser engines, approximately 700 horsepower apiece. 
running four number four Mercury Surface Speedmaster drives. An outstanding boat capable of speeds in excess of 120 miles an hour. They're currently number one in the national point standings in the Superboat class. Oh yeah, that's a really super shot right down the tunnel of the Popeyes. That's a 50-foot all-aluminum Cougar Cat. And right now he's showing the boys the way around the course. Bill Sorias, one of the great throttle men of all time and crew chiefs. Bill, in addition to the offshore racing on the national circuit, you just completed a sensational run from Miami to New York in a uh, rather large V-bottom 46-footer. Must have been quite an experience for you. Well, it was that, that's for sure, and as well as an education. <laughs> what was it like running out there at night at 80 miles an hour? Well, it was it was certainly different. Um, um, uh, we had about three to four foot stuff in the middle of the night, and it just just kind of have to learn to feel the boat rather than to watch the water and read it. And uh, it wasn't too bad, really. Mm -hmm. We had night vision, and it was it helped quite a bit. It did. Huh? Well, listen, you did a great job. You broke the record. You finished second in that one. You're leading in points with the Popeyes 50 footer right behind us here on the dock. Looks like it's going to be a rough one today, and we want to wish you well. Gentry Turbo Eagle number 99, Don Johnson, Gus Anastasi, Phil Sarai, fly it in big seas. Third, oh, third in Super Bowl, fourth overall, showing a surprisingly good turn of speed today. They are very, very competitive. This is their kind of water. The kind of water that they've needed all year. They get this big, long V-bottom out here and span some of these huge rollers. On the way out to that northern checkpoint, I looked over my shoulder and I saw this boat at least 15 feet in the air. They have just gone through some extremely dramatic seas and come out none the worse for where it would appear. Well, third place in Superboat, closing on second, is the Gentry Turbo Eagle with Don Johnson up. And for you ladies, there's Don Johnson in the middle, the driver of the boat. Bill Saroy on the throttles. Gus Anastasi is the navigator. And they've seen some very rough seas today. Seas rough enough to stand this boat on end. And maybe give them a couple of gray hairs. slowed down a good 10 miles an hour since the start of the race. Still running in the high 80s. It was running at about 100 at the beginning, as I recall. They probably backed her down now to finish. Maybe they don't realize that Popeyes is uh, just up ahead, limping along. We have a war between two unexpected leaders in Superboat. Don Johnson and the number 99 Gentry Turbo Eagle and C&G's Awesome are hooked up in a war. Number 13 and number 99. The Gentry Turbo Power is barely holding the lead. Don and Gus Anastasi and Bill Sarai. And they are eyeball to eyeball with C&G's awesome. Popeyes is broken. And that left these two boats uh, to thrash it out, as you see, for the, for the lead. They're 
really going at it. You can see the turn there, virtually in a dead heat. Don Johnson turning on the inside. C&G's awesome on the outside. That inside lane, you can see the advantage of it. Now, C&G may have made a tactical mistake just now by moving across the wake to try to pick up the inside on the next turn because the next turn is a right turn, not a left turn. dying easily though in the C and G is coming back up on the gentry. What I think is happening is with the, the extra horsepower of those gentry engines and they're at least 850 apiece, Saroy and uh, Johnson in the Gentry Eagle are playing a kind of a cat and mouse game. <coughs> but it doesn't get any closer than this in Superboat class. Bottoms. They're giving each other thumbs up signs of friendship. That's fine until the checkered flag drops, then we'll see what happens. Up, well, CNG's awesome is taking the lead. And these guys are having a ball for themselves. This is what you call your basic close racing. And we're running a little over 100 miles an hour right now. I think the name on the side of the number 13 boat says it all. Totally awesome. Big boats, big horsepower, big experienced crews. Elliot Sutton and Don Johnson, bow handle to bow handle. they turned checkpoint number one and it became Don Johnson's water. Billy Saroy put the throttles down, chased the Papa Gentry boat and they're now in second place going by the Popeyes in the big stuff. Don Johnson, look at that almost stuff but got through it and kept on going. The seas are very treacherous out here. This is not good water for any of these boats. As you see this big Gentry V-bottom having its difficulties. But here comes PTM Express right up the middle as well. Phil Bashinsky has a taste of the lead himself. And he blasts right by the Gentry V-bottom and the Popeyes in one fell swoop. The Apache showing its stuff. It's quite a dog fight at Superboat here in the first lap. All right, Al Copeland versus Don Johnson fighting it out for third place in superboat class, but third place right now is meaningless as all of the boats are bunched up. This is the tightest superboat race we've had all week. They're all right here, all going for the lead, and the water conditions favor no one. It's good. It's just rough enough that the V-bottoms can hang with the cat. Gentry Cat is throwing up a monstrous wake. Don Johnson, the TV star, leading the points race in this Gold Cup series. He's the guy that's been the first with the mostest all week long. Got this big Gentry V-bottom, powered by Gentry engines. It's a well-craft scarab. Don Johnson, Bill Saroy, and Gus Anastasi. And all of a sudden, from I don't know where, here comes the Popeye's cat. This is the closest superboat race we've ever seen in terms of a number of boats being all right there for the lead.
This boat here, number 99, the Gentry entry, that rhymes, doesn't it? Is the uh, most consistent boat all week. As I said, it has the best finishing record. I believe it has a second and a first to its credit. And I'm not sure if anybody else has finished both races so far. The war for second place in Superboat V-Class has boiled down to number one, Apache Kid, and number five, the Diet White, Diet White Scarab Thunder. Both of these boats are striving to catch, striving to catch Richie Powers in the Apache Heritage. But the Billy Soroy is in the Diet Right. It's good to see him back. Now this is quite a boat race. As these three bottom superboats, one an Apache and one a Wellcraft. And this race continues. Billy Sarai sat out for the last couple of years. It is very good to see you back. Story on the uh, on the wheel. Now, Alan Paris is Splish Splash Racing Team. And Spirit of Norway is down in the water. Making some quick repairs. And that's a shame if they don't get started again. That's what we talked about. It is imperative that you finish. All right, the race in the harbor for the, who's got the top speed? I know there's a lot of horsepower in this diet, right? Big Merc Cruiser 1000 SCs. The C and G Marine engines in that Apache kid. And Merc Cruiser is just kind of surging ahead. Billy puts the hammer down, man. Let's get a power check right now. This is all about horsepower. Whoa, all about handling too. It's choppy in here. They're not backing down. You get her calmed down and here they come, they're making their move. Oh, yes, they are making their move. Getting very close together. Avoiding tough enough. Oh, man. Tight racing. Very tight racing. All right, here's the race for the lead in Super Boat B. Wheat Revenge is back down. Lost an engine. <coughs> Patchy Heritage makes a move for the lead. Diane Wright is right there in second place, so the lead changes right in front of him. I see in excess down. So this is the race for Super V, the Sunoco Diet Right Scarab Thunder and the Apache Heritage. A Scarab and an Apache. Well, thanks for all the credit, guys. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it takes a three-man team. You need a driver and a navigator and so on. And all I do is really push the throttles and trim the boat and uh, eat a lot of Popeye's fried chicken to, to pay for the bills. <laughs>